How's it going, everybody? Um, I'm here at work on 4th of July, just chilling in my office. Um, I thought I'd uh, make a quick video on um, the horses of the apocalypse. Um, I want to just kind of um, jump on here every once in a while and explain some stuff um, on, on Revelation to make it simple. My whole thing is, is the book of Revelation is simple and easy to understand. It's not hard to understand. Um, we make it more complex than it is because it seems to be all jumbled and symbolism and this and that. But everything is explained in the Bible, and I can show you that, show you it very easy. You don't need um, all these other books or sources. Um, you just need the Bible itself and a relationship with God. And if you, if you let God be the answer to your questions, he will confirm. Because the Bible says the Word of God is spiritually discerned. So that's the only way you're going to get it right. Um, going to school isn't going to do it. <clears throat> um, yeah, if you're hearing from a good teacher that knows what they're talking about, um, that definitely helps. Just like watching this uh, might help you, but um, when it comes down to it, you need to look look it up for yourself and um, and let God confirm it through revelation. So the horses of the apocalypse, that whole section of chapter six of Revelation, um, the first three uh, four seals starts at the beginning of the tribulation and it ends in the middle of the tribulation so that that's the four horsemen they it starts at the beginning of the tribulation and it ends in the middle of the tribulation <clears throat> now the white horse the rider of the white horse has a bow in his hand and a crown now this is the antichrist now if you look at ezekiel chapter 39 verse 3 it's talking about the antichrist um, and god is going to draw him down from the land of the north to surround Israel, which Jesus is then going to come and destroy his army. But <clears throat> in verse 3, he's got a bow and arrow, and God's going to smite it out of his hands, it says. Um, the, white, the rider of the white horse also has a bow. Now, the Antichrist is one of the ten kings of the ten king empire, otherwise known as the revived Roman Empire. That empire is going to come out of World War III, or some kind of world war that we're waiting on, and when the smoke clears, there's going to be ten kings. He's one of those ten kings. Now, Israel is still looking for their savior. And the savior that they're looking for is one who is coming to take the kingdom by force. They wanted Jesus to do that. But he said, no, that, that's not what I'm here for right now. The kingdom is in your heart. Okay? But Jesus will come and take the kingdom. He bought and paid for the kingdom. And when he comes, it's his. Now the Antichrist, they're going to believe that he's him, that he's, he's the Christ. And, and in Daniel chapter 9, it talks about <clears throat> the 70 weeks of Daniel and that he, in the 70th week, which is the seven-year tribulation, is going to sign a peace treaty with Israel. That's going to start that seven-year period. That's him riding in on the white horse. They're going to accept him because he's a man of war and he's going to be charismatic and he's going to fit the bill in their eyes. Now Jesus said this, he said, I came in my father's name, and you did not accept me. But one will come in his own name. Him you will accept. Okay, this is the Antichrist. <clears throat> so the white horse is deception. It's the false Christ. Now when they accept him in, he's going to just have gotten done with battle. Okay, because again, he's one of the ten kings. And he fought his way into that position. And they're going to let allow him to go into their temple, which has yet to be rebuilt, okay? They're going to rebuild this temple, and they're going to start sacrifice again, and they're going to allow him in there to do sacrifice. But the Bible says in the middle of the week, which is the middle of the tribulation, he's going to cause it to cease, and he's going to do the abomination of desolation, where he's going to sacrifice an unclean thing and desecrate the temple. And 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 tells us that he is going to proclaim that he is God. Okay, and this is when Israel is going to finally wake up. This is finally when they're going to realize that he is not the guy. Now, the white horse is the Antichrist deceiving Israel. They're going to let him in. As soon as he's in, he's going to begin to war again, World War IV, against the very kingdom that he's a part of. Okay, he's going to, just, he's going to pounce on three kings of the Ten King Empire, and he's going to do it with such power that they're, the rest of the kings are going to bow down to him, and he's going to take the kingdom. But it's going to take that whole entire first three and a half years for him to win over the kingdom. 
this is the red horse okay this is the war of the red horse now the black horse is of course famine that always follows war and the pale horse is death and disease that follows famine and war and it says in there that hell will follow the death from that pale horse what that is saying is everybody who dies from that war is not saved okay God is preserving the ones who actually turn to him during that first three and a half years of the tribulation he's gonna preserve them so that they can walk in the last three and a half years and be martyrs for Christ now anybody who doesn't die for Christ that is saved is gonna walk into the thousand year reign saved but they're not gonna be a part of the resurrected Saints that's something that you don't want to miss you want to be a resurrected saint okay but we'll get into that in, in a different video um, so the four horsemen of the apocalypse is a progression from the beginning of the tribulation to the middle in the middle is when you have chap chapter 13 chapter 17 where the Antichrist takes full power now another thing that I really want to um, express about these horses is why does God use the horses um, if you look in Zechariah chapter um, 6 it talks about these horses actually there but it talks about them a little different way and if you read it they're coming from from the um, between two mountains of brass okay and they're coming down to walk to and fro upon the earth well what does that sound like well Satan comes to walk to and fro upon the earth okay these horses represent the principalities and the powers from from the air okay that's talked about in Ephesians chapter 6 so when they're coming be from between two mountains of brass it's, it's actually meaning they're coming from heaven if you read Job chapter 1 and 2 Satan and his angels still go to heaven to accuse God's saints any mistake we make he's gonna go up there and be like well he made a mistake and Jesus is gonna step in as our advocate and says as our advocate and say I'm still working with him I'm still working with her okay so they still go to heaven it talks about that in 2nd Kings chapter 21 I believe or 22 man can't remember um, where there is a congregation in heaven and um, you know one angel says I'm gonna deceive Ahab in this way another one says I'm gonna deceive Ahab in this way and God says no that's not gonna work and another one says I'm gonna be a lying spirit in the mouth of his prophets and he says that will work okay and these are not good angels okay being a, a lying spirit is not going to be from a good angel from an angel of God so these angels still go to heaven every so often and there's a congregation now when they come back down they have their plans made okay and they begin to walk to and fro upon the earth and in chapter uh, 6 of Zechariah some of them go up to the north and this is when the Babylonian Empire when Belshazzar is overthrown by the Medo Persian Empire it's the spiritual powers that are backing these kingdoms so the spiritual powers that come from heaven and they go directly to the land of the north which is actually Babylon which it's really in the east but for some reason the it's called the land of the north in, in Zechariah <clears throat> these angelic powers are represented by horses and chariots and they are the power behind the Medo Persian Empire coming to overthrow the Babylonian Empire. So, what God is saying in Revelation chapter 6 is that the Antichrist is being, is riding the principalities and powers. It's not by his power, it's by the power of Satan, which is actually the power of God because God is allowing Satan to do this. But it's the principalities and powers that give the Antichrist his ability to take the kingdom. And this is in, in everything in life. Um, all, any kind of dictator any kind of evil is being driven by Satan in his angelic powers but God also will send his angels and he empowers us and he will let us uh, cause us to be able to walk through the fire without burning okay so it goes both ways okay so I wanted to kind of um, give you just a quick rundown on what the four horses of the apocalypse what, what's going on there the timing and the timeline and the timeline is very important to understand if you want to understand Revelation you got to get the timeline down and once you get the timeline down it becomes more clear again everything all these symbolisms are that are in Revelation are in the rest of the Bible and God did that on purpose so you go back and look and get these things figured out alright so God bless have a good one love you bye